welcome back to another animation session, I guess. So I'm going to be doing this gym scene where she's practicing with the sword and then has a conversation. So I did the first part of it, and this was using um, some motion capture. So right there is when the conversation is going to start. So I already recorded some motion capture, and I'm going to, let's create a keyframe there, world, is there a world, I don't know why that says that there, it's the root bone, so I'm going to create a keyframe there, and I'm just going to import the motion data as is, and start to clean it up. So, if I can find my motion file, and let's see, make a, in the gym. And this, um, I have a link to how to get mocap into this program. So, uh, using live animation, it automatically sets the first frame as a T-pose. So... You can just start deleting that. And usually, if you combine motion data, as long as you, like I said, I had the first, what, up, 0 to 265 was previous motion data, they're not linked. But if you select all and register and make a keyframe and then import your next motion data file, as long as in IPI soft, you made sure to recenter, or retarget to center your whole motion data. It should import it in the same exact place as where the last one left off. So that makes it really easy to join, join uh, two different pieces of motion. So I'm just going through deleting all this excess motion data just to smooth up the playback a bit. I'm not really worried right now about the timing. And up here in this blue bar, that's the dialogue, which, because of the way this records, you probably can't hear it. Um, I'll have to figure out how to record that for you so I can show you, I guess, how to time it, which, you know, this is just me acting and it's not really timed, but I'll work on the timing as this goes on. So right now it's just basically deleting all this excess data. And I'll probably end up deleting a lot of this, uh, a lot of these keys as well, just because I want to clean up the poses. Like here, this is how the motion data came out. It's really messed up. Pose is really, you can't really tell what it is. Basically, she's going to have her practice sword behind her head and kind of relaxing on it. So I'm just deleting this stuff, and then I'll probably go back and delete these keys once I fix the pose. So let's find the end of this. It's a long conversation. So, all right. Okay, so you can probably delete pretty big swath of this. Let's try from five ten to I don't know and all frame. So five ten to I don't know, seven sixty because there's not much movement there. 765, range select, and delete them. And then I'm going to go forward to the end of this. Should be, here we go. There's, um, when she kind of gets pissed and this is like, ugh. And so I have to drag 
all this motion data back. Let's see, it should be 765, so 765. And I just added a zero here to go as far out to make sure I get all the motion data, which I know it, for a fact it probably only ends at 1,000 or 2,000. So the important part is to get the timing right where she says, ugh. And that starts about here, 9.35. So I can keep moving this back. Maybe back a little bit further. All right, there we go, and that's going to be last frame. So I six, and select all frame, delete those. So then once again, this tedium of deleting all this excess motion data. I also need to change the camera angle, but since there's only going to be two characters talking in this scene. I have to load in the other character because she's not loaded in yet. So basically, this uh, project I'm working on is almost finished. Um, I have about two, three more scenes to do of just dialogue, really, in simple idle animations because I already did all the fight scenes and stuff. So it should be done maybe in a couple weeks. And of course, I'll post it here for you to see. And so far, it looks to be about seven minutes long, maybe. It'll probably be longer once I add transition scenes, things like that. Of course, the credits to intro. So maybe 10 minutes, actually, which I don't know. My animations have seemed to be getting into semi i guess real length episodes which are not bad i guess although that's just the way i write i tend to write a lot of dialogue a lot of exposition and since this is going to be a series too um there's a lot of stuff to put into the story in the beginning and this first episode is pretty much it's just intro intro characters, slice of life, a little bit of action, and um, pretty much just an intro, really, to get to know who the characters are and uh, what what is the vibe of the story. And basically, it kind of goes crazy from there. Basically, this character, Mako here, is going to, she's pretty much hit rock bottom. She's about to lose her house. She's, you know, kind of bummed out because she, her parents left her with uh, kind of a whole bunch of debt <laughs> and just ran off. So they're terrible parents. So she's been trying to go to school and work and stuff. And of course, she's not able to do that. But her parents ran off because they were indebted to the mafia. So. She's kind of screwed, so one day she ends up finding this sword that, you know, she thinks is really expensive. It looks like an antique. So she decides, well, maybe I can barter for this because that's all she's got, really. And um, some crazy stuff happens from there, but this is just the intro because it turns out later that that sword is not just a regular sword, of course. It's got to be interesting. So let's go back to this. Okay, this is where we can start to... I have to go back and change the face, but I'll change that when I have the other character there so I know where to place it. I have to fix this, uh, as you can see, that collection of model that gets her elbow 90 degrees, which is going to be a little bit annoying to fix, but you can fix that. Let's see where this is. Um, 
try to rotate some of these. Nope. Those are not the right bones. So I just try to get this into the other hand. Now I have to move the shoulders back. So it's not sticking through your head. As long as I get the first kind of frame down, you can copy and paste these, I guess, upper body arm placement for the rest of the frame since she's going to be standing for this, like, like this for a while. Set behind the head, yeah. So, okay. And I'm just going to copy. This is how you mirror in this program. Um, and the how to mirror uh, poses. You just select one bone, hit copy, and then reverse. And that's, the reverse is actually mirroring. So we're just going to do that. And that should give us... Decent mirror. Make that a keyframe, although it's not that good. You can clean it up a little bit later. The other thing, too, I noticed that I think it's part of IPI Soft, where the way it calculates the, I guess, waste, somehow it gets a little bit weirded out. And it can make it really weird. You'll have weird sort of turns in the hips that are not right. So a lot of times I have to delete those motion data from that. Okay, so. And probably delete these frames and then fix this frame. And now here, I have to kind of, once again, let's copy this for just a base box select. To select all these bones, copy them. Now this is going to be a little bit hard because that wind sword that she's holding right now is not a PMX model. It's uh, at, uh, dot X, direct X model. So, which means I can't uh, freely tween it since it doesn't have a bone associated with it. So, right now I'm just going to put this, I'm probably going to replace the, that into, since I'm just using this as a placeholder for right now. And also fix this. Oh, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes first. I want to maybe reset these because. Now let's reset them. Kind of get some of the weirdness out of this. There we go. And copy reverse. Copy reverse and uh, a mouse. Really have to get a new mouse. And reverse. I don't know why that is like that. And let's see if we can rotate these back. Just going to slightly change that this pose probably copy it backwards just because of the way the arms look are kind of weird. Alright. And mirror those. Alright. Alright, first now since I'm 
going to do this. Where is this? I'm going to show you real quick how to. Let me save this because I have a tendency not to save. Um, and sometimes when I open this, it has a tendency to crash. But I'm going to convert that .x file into a movable um, prop, or at least give it a bone so I have to reopen it and save it as a um, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, where'd it go? Okay, 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 okay. And all these plugins are some plugins that, once again, they're just not in the right folder, but I'm so lazy that I didn't bother to look at which folder they're supposed to be in. So that's why it keeps giving me those errors every time I open this. So let's import and find out where, first of all, where this prop is. It should be in here. There it is. Plugin. Oh, I did it already. Wow, 3.9, so I did this a while ago and I forgot about it. Let's just double check and make sure that's right. I do. So, yeah, all right, cool. So I can just import this. So what happens is long lead times, I forget what I did. All right, so it should be in here somewhere. There it is in the floor. Uh, bone doesn't work. Does bone work? Yep. Uh, so anyways, I still do have to fix this because that bone is in the wrong place. It needs to be in the grip. So basically, delete this bone. Whoops, not the vertice. So this bone, we have to... Is that weighted down? Yeah, it's all weighted down. So that's good. And it is approximately in the grip. So let's export this again. Well, and save it first. And save, that should overwrite. Okay, now delete this and re import it. And it should be updated. Move this up. And here we go, we're good now. Um, let's see. Probably gonna do it bait and switch type of thing. Let me see what bones is called. Null 24. All right, so look in outside parroting and find null 24. There we go. So now when we import this, as you can see, it's not in the right place, but now we can move it into the right place. Good motion data. So this is like if you wanted to do something like picking up or throwing an object or, you know, those type of things. This is how you do it with outside parenting. You can also do it with the X file as an accessory. Um, but the problem is if, if you want to add motion data, like you could pick up something that's going to be static in the character's hand. Say you want to pick up something and throw it around. Um, all right. I have to move that bone down a little bit. Okay. Well, I can just move the X file. I'll have to fix it anyways. Let's just say this. Try to. Yeah, that's not that. But if you're trying to do something where you're trying to have an object that's going to be moving around, throwing it like a ball or something, or you really want to use a model with that uh, PMX, PMD model. Once again, PMD models, I you can also use them. I think you can import them into Poser since there are Poser media data. I will import them, I think. Although they may have some issues because if you try to import any like MMD rigged um, model into Poser, you'll have issues because of the bones not being named. Like center is not an English name. So it probably won't, you'll have some issues with that. 
So let's maybe move that over a little bit more. Make sure that is right in the grip. And it looks like it is, at least a lot closer. All right, save it. Load it. I got another one, and I'm just going to copy this motion data from here. So you can copy those nodes and just paste them, and bam, it moves our new um, Vulcan sword into place where the other one was. And the reason why, it is slightly over. Like I could move it a little bit more over, but that's, that's good enough for now. Um, Okay, so now let's go back to whatever frame we were on. And look at all these. These need to be deleted, I forgot. Some of the ways these models are made, like I said, because of display options, NPM, DPM, etc. Where is it? This display panel? Like basically if I open up that, um, this Mako jumpsuit model. Some of these will be out of order, which is why usually you want to make sure all your nodes are kind of up here so you don't have to scroll up and down like this because it is kind of annoying. And also these excess nodes, the reason why I delete them is just because of the jumpiness sometimes of motion capture. Um, that you'll have a lot of, you may have an error in the node, so it may look fine, and then, you know, one frame, something is out of whack, so this also helps to smooth everything down and give it a nice, consistent flow of motion, since it'll do the interpolation in between these nodes instead of the starting, which is good if you're so you don't use motion capture. Um, it's good if you want to do a bunch of fast motions or very precise motions and stuff like that. Like say you're catching, you know, throwing or catching something or doing a backflip or something. Then I guess they call it dotting or something like this when you add the keyframes with no interpolation time in between. So let's delete all this. I don't even know what bone this is. This is a head bone, maybe? Doesn't say. A lot, a lot of deleting. Just to get a few key poses and, of course, timing. So, okay, there we go. Now, we just have to clean up this Okay, here, and then here, this is the frame that we're going to pretty much, once we have this frame cleaned up, we're pretty much going to use it for all the other upper body pose, I guess you would call it. So let's move this spoken lightweight first onto, since these are good frames and they're in the hand. I'm just going to paste them at the beginning so they don't tween. So let's see. Basically I'm going to have this slide down so I'm going to move this, um, these notes back a little bit. And I guess it would still be part of the, I could repair it to, I don't know, the shoulder or maybe the chest. Since I don't want, kind of want her shoulder, whatever, to rest on it. It's kind of a hard way to explain it. Just see it in a minute. Yeah, I might have to reparent this to... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to reparent this. So let's find out what her chest bone is called. Upper body 2. Um, okay, so, let's see, outside parent, upper body two. 
There we go. And the reason why I'm parenting this here versus the hand is probably because I'm going to just frame by frame animate some hand motions. And I don't want to have the Boken move from her shoulders. As you can see, yeah, the motion capture is not the best because my setup is not really super great. No monium. I don't have, I only have one connect camera. I did get another one, but the problem is, um, just because of my space that using it really doesn't I have to fix the dock there too. Ugh, it's always something to do. So let's see. Moves over a little bit. I'm probably gonna do a bait and switch between the cameras so you don't see the weird movement. All right, so let's move this back and up. Uh, She's going to wrap her arms, or I'll try to. I don't know how well this is going to work. Also, can I can hide that other thing. This is hard because in real life, your skin would sort of fit around that. But to kind of maneuver it into a weird way that it doesn't... Let's undo that. This one part, since there's no, I mean, I guess I could make a morph, but uh, I don't know. I'll have to see how to do this. So one good thing about doing this stuff is you always have to figure out pretty much what you're doing. Since, you know, there's, I mean, there's tutorials on how to animate, but it's just something that you have to do to really get it, I guess. Just to learn how to do stuff. And, of course, I've watched you know, other people's tutorials, but most of it I just learned by messing with it. This bone is really not... I have to re-break that because that is not good. Let's try and fix this. Sometimes... You know, you may not be able to do exactly what you want to do, at least with this, because it is kind of more limited than, say, like a, a really nice rig from Pixar that has 50 million bones and a whole bunch of different morphs and things like that. These rigs are very simple, so there's a lot of stuff that you can and can't do, or at least have to kind of fake it. Alright, it's almost. Let's reverse these all on the other side. Up reverse. Luckily, though, that practice sort is curved, so I might be able to get to curve the right way. Dang, what kind of pose is this? This doesn't make any sense. Think of a scarecrow. That's kind of what I'm going for, which may may be able to put off, pull off rather, or may not. And I might just have to change it to something else. Which in that case, oops, uh, I think I rotated the wrong way. Move this. The other thing too is the IPI soft doesn't really. It does have facial um, or head tracking, but it's not that good, so kind of manually have to do the head. All right. Might not be able to do this because of the model not having a whole bunch of bones. It's constantly going to be clipping. But I'm going to try. It may take a while. Let's see, how would I do this? Move that back. Pose this like that. Move that back. Kind of have to clip through a 
little bit. Let's see if I can move this forward. Oh. There we go. Almost. Move this down. Max. There we go. That's almost what I want. That's pretty close. It's probably as close as it's going to get. I just have to fix the rest of the body. So, make life easy. I'm just going to mirror the other side. And then try to fix. All right. Okay. That is pretty much as good as it's going to get, I think. All right. Let's save that sucker because that took a little while. All right, so, uh, first of all, I don't forget, add this um, tune shader to that sword so that it looks the same, in case you were wondering why they don't look the same. One has a tune shader, if I can find where I put it, and apply that. There we go. So now that looks similar. Let's see how this is. I'll probably delete this other. Well, let me just. Yeah, you know, I'll probably have to go back into the relatively in the right place. Why do I? Why does this seem like I have another camera angle somewhere? Oh. For whatever reason, my camera data is not loading, or my camera poses aren't loading. Alright, so 122. Oops, not 122, 123. So I like this camera. Alright, so. Well, there's a weird frame here. Get to delete that. Kind of make it a little smoother. And then I'll have to animate the uh, sword moving when she moves her hand. So around 420 to there. But I'm, since that's kind of simple. Alright, so there we go. That's pretty good. So let's save this keyframe. And let's see. So, okay. Make that a keyframe. And I'm probably going to delete all these keyframes in between because I don't really need them. Just to make the motion a little bit smoother. It's actually, I need to delete that. So I'm on 569. And I want to hit all frame. Delete. Now, I think for the rest of this, she's probably going to be in the same, at least from 446, she's probably going to be in the same position, at least with the upper body, while talking. So, up to 915. So, let's do 914. And so, now that I have this range in between here, now I can go back to whatever, 446. Just click all the way back over. So from 446, I'm just going to click on these bones. And the uh, mouse stops doing this. Hit go to select. And hit, where is it, select bone. Range select those bones and delete them. I'll delete the motion data for him, not delete the bones. And then this should make sure that her arms and whatnot are not moving. 
from this position while she talks. And all this, um, hand gestures, or gesticulating, I guess you call it, when you move your hands when you talk. So, let's see. Alright. Should be good. But now I have to copy this movement, or copy these, this pose. So that's why I'm just box selecting all those. Copy that. Go all the way to, oops, I have a keyframe here for some reason. Paste those. And go to, what did I say, 914? 914. Say 910. And paste. Oops, look, not what I wanted to do. I accidentally paste something I shouldn't have. There we go. Paste it to itself by the accident. So, as you can see, that's what happens with the, um, uh, what would you call it? The waist hip bones in IPI soft. It gets just really weird. In fact, I'm not even, let's make that a keyframe. Go back, 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 back. Probably not like a lot of that. So she's gonna lean this way. That's not a bad pose. That's kind of other than a little bit of clipping here and there. Our feet are in the floor. And I might just move the whole background down. Alright, so let's say make this a keyframe and I'm gonna so this is five ninety. Five ninety. Yeah, that lower body is really screwed up. 590 to 910. Or, yeah, nine, not 910, 909. And all frame. I hit all frame. Range select, So, there's very little. Now I just deleted basically 90% of my motion data. All right, so basically, oops, I also have to fix the way her spine is because it just doesn't go with the fact that you're leaning like that. Uh, yep, it should be more rounded in. Flip, rotate. Something like that, I think. It's a little bit better. Stop. Oh my god, my mouse. I really don't know why it does that. So, copy, X frame, paste. Move it in. X frame, paste. Alright. So, delete a whole bunch of motion data. Now, save it, of course. Alright, so now I can finally load in my next character. Wow, all that for one character. Let's see, where is the other character? No, 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 where is, where the hell is my other character? I put that on there. Yes. Final two. Yes, 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 yes. Just loads. Now, usually what I'll do is, of course, I'm going to repeat the same process, deleting most of the motion data. Although, Sue is, since she's more idle and she's not in a weird kind of stance, um, 
I'll probably delete less of her motion data and just usually probably tweak it. But once I have both of them in the frame, I hope this thing doesn't crash. Although I did save it, so it doesn't really matter. This is taking a long time to load. But then I usually figure out my camera angles from there. It's taking a really long time to load. I may break this into... Yeah, I'm probably going to break this into two parts. So this will be part one. And then I'll basically do animation session, the next one, for part two. Well, not part two, whatever. I think I'm on like four or five now. I don't know. I don't even know. Anyways, thanks for watching. I will upload the next part after this. So you can see how the rest of the scene takes shape. And also how the, I guess, interaction happens. And as well as camera angles also. Thanks for watching.